What is up? A mad scientist coming back at you from my garage here. My goal is not just to mount this and match it to a carrier condenser, which I want to take this one ton high wall and made it to the condenser section of this VRP. So I have two of these that I got running. The one I want to keep operational as factory just for testing at home and doing things and doing some ideas and stuff kind of help, you know, the what we know about these VRP units. And then I'm going to uh, take the other one, probably this one that's more simple, doesn't have the uh, reheat and everything. Um, I'm gonna take the top section off. It looks like it'll come right off. I probably just played it. And basically just turn this to an outdoor unit that'll mount outside. And then I'm gonna run the refrigerant lines into this. And then I'll probably have to locate the sensor so there's like a, there's a return air temperature sensor this thing's gonna want to be happy it is right there so uh, to see what cave resistance it is which I have the charts for them and I also have the book for this so I should be able to just look and see if they're the same if they're the same I'll just run a wire and make my own little plug and plug it in there if not I'll have to actually relocate that sensor itself right here and then there's a sensor here on the coil I got to see how these are working but I believe this is just an in and an out some of these have this doesn't have the clear cover but that one over there does we'll look at that later so basically my first task is I want to see if I can run this blower um, without the control board right now um, I've this thing powered up and it will run the blower with the remote of course it's not going to cool it'll probably eventually throw a fault if I try to cool whatnot whatever but I'm just curious about the signals here I have here you know the pinouts and just looking at it from what I'm guessing is this is your common ground so ground to pin 3 to pin 1 is your 300 volts DC you know in that range to rectify 230 volt AC and then from ground to white or from 3 to 4 you're gonna get your 14 to 17.5 I'm just calling it 15 volts ground to 5 yellow it's your speed signal 0 to 5.6 I just called it 0 to 6 and then uh, ground 3 to 6 is FG and it's I have the feeling that's a feedback we're gonna find out so I have this little cheap Amazon oscilloscope that served me well I have it hooked up right here to 3 and 5 and expecting to see what I'm expecting is 0 volts of 0 speed and about five and a half or whatever it's gonna be you know your full speed so put it on low speed here and you're gonna see uh, got some information here in the little graph there as soon as the fan goes there it goes 2.75 volts and the blower is running nice and slow so I'm gonna take this and speed it up to medium there three 3.12 volts and the fan sped up just a pinch so and I think one more click is going to be high here at least as high as it goes without cooling this is fan only three point about 3.75 volts there's an auto mode but that probably just does what it wants go back to low It's gonna start dropping down. Sweet. So let's go to the feedback. I'm kind of curious what that one's gonna be. I don't know if that's pulse width modulation or if that. Let's hit the auto button. Sometimes this auto button will. There we go. Looks like that might be pulse width modulation for the feedback. It's just it's probably just a Hall effect sensor or something in there or optics. Let's go to a little faster speed. Let's go to medium. What did it say the frequency was? It is definitely a frequency, not a duty cycle. So it's not a pulse width modulation as far as frequency. Uh, duty cycle shift, it's still about 50% duty cycle. What does it say the frequency time? 5.5 milliseconds? Okay, that should be shorter once it goes faster. Okay, so that's frequency. 
Okay, and that's just a feedback to your control board so it can uh, determine if the fan is controlling, if it actually is, is in, it's running, you know, according to the signal. So the signal isn't pulse width modulation. It probably is internally, and then it's just filter, capacitor filtered, and it's a steady voltage. I'm guessing because here in a second we're going to try to control the speed externally, which is my goal. Might get lucky, might find out that that VRP operates in a similar manner with this control scheme here. Might be able to do some funny stuff to interface it. Maybe direct, maybe with some optical isolators, or maybe I might have to do a circuitry. I might have to put a microprocessor in between the two. So, I really only need a couple speeds. So, B peak. So, for some reason, that signal is like your 14, 15 volts. I labeled everything ground. The red wire, you don't want to touch. That's 300 volts, pretty much. And luckily, it's over here. So the next one, and this should be just a steady DC voltage right there. And it is, 14.7 volts. I just call it 15 volts. So, okay, I'm gonna shut this sucker down. And I'm gonna unhook some wires and we're gonna see if we can control the speed externally. Okay, first things. Got my own little project, pulse width modulation uh, controller I made just for testing stuff like this. This is the pulse width, the duty cycle right here. And then these up down buttons just shift the frequency. So I'm shifting the frequency higher. I got a really low pulse width frequency right there. Okay, then we'll. This thing, the auto mode is still on really slow frequency. We'll, we'll change that. There we go. Yeah, you can see it 100% zero so I have that powered off it uh, doesn't seem to need that turned on I still got my high voltage there and it seems like this is modulating I mean it's cranking and I only have like oh it is 4.3 volts so it's blowing pretty hard and I can completely control it turning this down Yeah, this is how I wish the uh, old ECMs worked <laughs> in air handlers, so I could always have used one with pulse width modulation, but definitely easily controlling the fan speed. Trying to down a whisper there. This is barely blowing. Crank it up. You can just hear it. It instantly changes speed. Hell yeah, brother. I can still catch phrases. But anyway, you can probably hear that in the phone microphones now. It's blowing. That sucker's blowing. So, okay. I should be able to just to take this sucker and hook up. Uh, I'm kind of curious if it's got the uh, 15 volts still there. Let me take a look. Heck, because I'm not even going to read it. I'm just going to cut the 15 volt wire and see if it stays running. And it doesn't. All right. So now I'm going to introduce uh, like 12 volts on there and see if uh, that brings the motor to life. High voltage, 12 volt, uh, like control power, I guess, inside the motor, and then my varying speed reference. Okay, this is where the mad scientist starts to really come into play. It's always interesting when you're intermingling with high voltage and low voltage all right next to each other. So I have uh, 12 volts between common, black, and the white, which I labeled as 15 volts. I had like 14.7 when I read earlier, so I think 12 will be in the ballpark. And then I went ahead and snipped the feedback signal because we know we don't need that. And I still have my speed command hooked up. Turn this on, watch for smoke. And it's shutting this because it's off, but I'm gonna hijack it. What I need to do is unplug that. You got nothing. Well, it seems that uh, 12 volt is not quite enough in the ballpark. I don't know if I touch this on here. Yep. 
All right, so I'm gonna need something a little more than 12 volts. That sucks. So evidently, 12 volts is not enough in the ballpark for control voltage. Yeah, put a battery in series, add another, another 1.5 volts, and yeah, that's just kind of wedged in there, and it's working. So the control voltage probably does need to be 14 to 15 volts. So I'll have to make some sort of a 15 volt power supply to go in to run this motor. It's interesting to know. Being that it is, uh, has all one common, I probably could just make some sort of pulse width modulated regulator off of the high voltage, you know, to make uh, the 15 volts. I want this all to work off of like a single power supply. When you hook up 300 volts or whatever of batteries, basically, essentially, I just want it to pop this motor because this needs to be able to run off grid because that's how I'm hoping to modify this unit to be able to run off grid. I still have to kind of check out how that motor works. Interesting enough, that other unit I have over there did not have this transformer. So it had just a straight, you know, power going into uh, the motor on that one. Here is the other unit. Here's the plug. Your high voltage, ground, and then L1, L2. Your speed control over here, just the same as that other one. Now this one here, this cable goes to that transformer that's mounted right there. This one doesn't have. So this one's just mounted right to L1 and L2 over here. And ground. So I, um, I gotta look up the motor parts, see if they're different. Obviously this one's not getting the lower voltage sent to it. Maybe the uh, there's a chance also maybe the uh, nameplates got mixed up and one was a 277 volt model. I do believe from what I found out, and I'm pretty sure the guys confirmed with me that this board here is the same, but perhaps the 277 volt input is too much for the blower. So this cover says um, 230, 208. I probably should go, I have the other cover. I should go check it out real quick. So here's some other panels. I don't remember which one's which. Actually, the panels were all just laying loose from when I got it, but what does that say for voltage right there? 265. This is the 277 volt model. That's why it has that transformer in there. Set as auto transformer or whatever it is. It's dropping the voltage a little bit. I'm not using uh, 265, 270. I don't need that transformer. I could take that transformer out. Shit. That's funny. So that is interesting. This panel said 230. never thought anything of it. But this panel goes to the unit over there, it doesn't have the transformer. This unit with the transformer, 277 volt unit. <laughs> panel out there must go to this one. That's why it's got this step down in series with it. Because that would be, uh, 277 volts rectified would be, you know, probably close to 400 volts DC. Not about 400 or so. Who knows? So, off to do, it's getting dark. Off to, I'm gonna do a little bit of rewiring and uh, maybe make another attempt to at running this unit. Oh, speaking of that, I was gonna say, off of batteries, we'll, we'll I'll run this unit. Uh, so, I don't have quite the peak voltage that we had hooked up before. Remember, it was saying the voltage is too high. Now, hopefully, these batteries don't work to charge it, but actually all I have to do is take one out from series. So this unit, sun's down now, so it's running on utility now, so it's, that means it's drained the batteries down. So this bank of batteries then should have, should be staying at whatever peak voltage was today. About 307. So that's good. So I could put this DC, use this to power up that unit. And if it gives a high voltage, you know, issue, then I'll just move the wire and drop the voltage. You can kind of test it out. That'll be something maybe I'll do tomorrow after work or so. Yeah. One step closer to uh, fabricating my off-grid system. Now what I'm going to have to do is probably just 
go through the manuals and kind of compare some of these thermistors on here, see if they're in the same range. If they are, I'll just make a harness. That way I could just run the wires from the indoor to the outdoor when I mount this thing on the wall, label them, you know, in and out on the sensors and whatnot. And then, uh, that'd be cool. If not, I'm gonna have to relocate some sensors off of that onto this one. It's blowing, actually it's blowing pretty good. And one other thing I noticed was I finally just wedged uh, that duck tire. Now the air is blowing and dropping right on me, so it's actually as cool where I'm standing. But this is most inefficient running this like this. It is a good brutal test on this VRP though, because it's not only you know running you know it was like 100 degrees earlier. It's you know not only just got 100 degrees going to the <laughs> outdoor coil. It's had a near 100 you know here drawn into the return. See, it says 95 degrees. It's it's hot right here, and then it's. I mean, it, the air is in the 60s. It feels really cold actually coming in on me. Probably should throw my thermometer up there. Let's see and if this unit kicks ass or not. Leave that there for a few seconds. We'll see what it is. Sixty-four. About sixty-four degrees. The ninety-five right here. We'll see what that says. While we're waiting on that move my uh, move this over to the input from my little pulse width modulated generator just to show you kind of yeah, that'd be like 50% 100 yeah, just... The next thing I really need to do is see if I can find it in any manuals or whatnot. It might not tell. I might just have to start probing that over there and see what kind of signal varies with the fan speed over there. I'm hoping, actually, it could be either way. It could be a voltage or pulse width modulation. But if it's pulse width modulation, you know, uh, variable duty cycle, that'll be awesome because all I have to do is use this simple, this simple circuit, just optical isolator and it'll just switch uh, a five volts or whatever on the output just to vary the voltage. This could be awesome, so, oh yeah. It's actually 97 degrees. So 97, 64, <laughs> see if it kicks ass. Well, I think that will do it for the night. And as far as this thing is, I really don't need it to swing, so if I don't even power up this board at all, I could just kind of move it, kind of force it where I want it. Or I could power the unit up. It actually still has the, the high voltage connected to it now because that's what I'm uh, feeding into this, but uh, I'll just be feeding batteries into it or uh, you know just a rectifier circuit. So I'll probably try hooking this up to batteries next. See how that goes. Okay, well, with that, don't forget to like and subscribe, suckers. Share these videos. And we will catch you later.